Hello, recently a DC video game has been released that is a bit controversial with respect to canons. I'm talking about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Personally, it has quite unexpected but interesting twists. That story begins with a military convoy arriving at Arkham Asylum, and from it descends Amanda Waller, the head of Argus, a secret national security division. Once inside, she begins recruiting the most dangerous prisoners. Thus, he reaches the cell of Floyd Lawton, a.k.a. Deadshot, Digger Hergenes, Captain Boomerang, and of course, the crazy Harley Quinn and King Shark. In front of these, he proceeds to explain to them that he only needs the help of one, and that's why the rest will die. He places the X-Corp microbomb injector on the table, making it clear that only the one who kills the rest will survive. Once Waller leaves them alone, Deadshot says he understands Waller's goal, and that such a test is just a trap. Harley says she is willing to kill them all, but Deadshot points out that if they stand still, Waller will return. Boomerang breaks free, and after taunting his teammates, he sets out to get the injector, but then the rest also break free. Kicking off a battle for life, we see the injector pass through all the hands and the microbombs enter all the bodies until finally Waller returns. Here Deadshot realizes that he was right, as Waller tricked them all into getting the microbombs as she will now control them. When Deadshot wakes up, he realizes that, like the rest, he is being transported on a train, but they have all their weapons and freedom of movement. King Shark tries to break, but when he pulls the lever, it breaks and the tracks become turbulent, causing them to derail. The four survive unharmed, and although King Shark was stabbed, they soon realize that it is a tape recorder that was embedded by Walla. As they play it back, Amanda's voice christens them Task Force X and mentions that due to the depth they are at, they are unable to connect to the surface. That said, she explains that their mission is to detonate the wall of the old station's timetable and then gain access. As a final message, she warns them that any subversive act will cause her to detonate the bombs in their skulls. Thus, after blowing up the wall, they use an elevator to reach the Hall of Justice, which stores the history of the Justice League. Without thinking, the boomerang is launched on the weapons exposed as relics, and so we see that by wearing the gauntlet the Speed Force created to copy Flash, the captain manages to move like the speedster. For his part, Harley begins to play with Batman's tools such as his drone and his hook. King Shark is struck by the Riddler's invisibility hat and Deadshot tries his luck with a rocket pack. When Deadshot mocks King Shark's hat for being useless, the shark responds by showing him that it is capable of jumping great distances. Now with their new toys, the squadron continues to ascend, this time up the stairs until they finally reach the rooftop where they discover they are an alien robot of immeasurable magnitude. When they reestablish communications with Waller, she reveals to them that they are the first who arrive alive to Metropolis, and now their objective is to activate a transport that will be sent to them. With no options, the squad launches towards the city, and when they activate the machine they discover that it is powered by the energy of an alien, and the surprises continue when a small army of armed aliens teleports in front of them. The battle begins, and thanks to their abilities and their new weapons, they soon defeat them. But then they are captured by energy rings, as we see that it is Jon Stewart, Green Lantern. The squad believes he came to Metropolis, but he reveals to them that he works for Brainiac, the culprit behind the destruction of the city, who seeks to move his people to Earth. He continues and shows them how a surviving human is mutated by one of the aliens, and those rebels who do not respect martial law are executed. After the tour, as Green Lantern prepares to deliver the Arkham people, Flash, who apparently escaped from Brainiac's ship, appears. While they fight, the squadron, now free, asks Walla for reinforcements. She orders them to capture the Flash and take him to the the Hall of Justice, and although it seems impossible, after it destroys the giant creation of Green Lantern, we see that Boomerang discovers that he is hiding from the vibration because he was injured, and before Boomerang takes it out on the speedster, the squad notices that more enemies are approaching, so they take shelter inside a building with a curious gigantography of Batman that scares Harley. While the rest investigate the place, Boomerang corners Flash to cut him as revenge, but without believing him, he cuts off a finger, alerting the others. However, this goes unnoticed, as two policemen are captured and executed by Batman from the shadows, and when he finally shows himself, he only does it to lock them up and deactivate the lights, starting his hunt. In the midst of this, the first to be taken down is Harley, and since Batman also works for Brainiac, we see him shoot Harley. However, at the last instant, Flash manages to deflect the bullet, and in 
return gets a face disfiguring beating from Batman only to be kidnapped. Reunited, Walla orders them to return to the Hall of Justice. Here they decide to look behind a large mysterious door for something against it. King Shark tries to open it but lacks the necessary strength and only after being made a fool of, Boomerang reveals to them that he possesses Flash's thumb with which they manage to enter. Here they find the site's master computer, a map of Metropolis and the League suits. Batman's security system seems foolproof against the men but fails Harley's imitation of Batman, giving them access. However, right there on the scene, Wonder Woman arrives unleashing another battle. Deadshot fights back, but she immobilizes him with her dagger. King Shark launches himself at her unsuccessfully, as does Captain Boomerang, who is subdued by the lasso of truth, leading him to reveal that he hides his insecurities with alcohol and misconduct. But after learning that Batman took Flash, Amanda arrives on the scene, explaining that the entire Justice League is now evil, and so she must join their cause. Wonder Woman knows that the minds of her friends have been corrupted, and so she leaves to free them. For her part, Walla realizes that Wonder Woman has not. He orders his friends to harm him, so he orders his men to kill the Justice League. The squad is at a loss for words as they find it impossible. Waller then sends them to meet their reinforcement, and so they meet Hack, a scientist who leaves her hibernating body to live as a data wraith. She gives them her old costumes and while the rest adopt her best clothes, Harley doesn't like that model, so she creates her own military-style clothing. Once ready, they advance to the surface, where they observe that Green Lantern is defending the skull ship from the bombardment of Casa Plains. Albright Deadshot proposes to escape, but Harley is motivated because her name has been known to kill the Justice League. King Shark makes it clear that they do not decide discovers that the bombs in his body come from the LexCorp building, which is right in the middle of the city. Thus, to gain Waller's trust, they obey, and so arrive at the lair of Penguin, the latest arms dealer against metahumans. This proves to be collaborative until he discovers that Squad X works for Amanda Waller. However, due to the disparity in their strengths, Squad X corners him and injects him with a microbomb to forcibly recruit him. As he tries to hear, they electrocute him several times, much to the amusement of the boys. Soon, Colonel Rick Flag arrives, who after capturing the Penguin orders them to go downtown to fight the Terminauts. Here, upon seeing a Green Lantern statue, Deadshot takes it out on it, thus discovering that it houses Penguin's weapons inside. This is interrupted by the appearance of a monstrous Terminaut, but it doesn't last long as he is pierced by Wonder Woman, who warns that next time she won't save him and that they must leave the city. After this, Rick Flag picks them up to take them to the workshop of Gizmo, who turns out to be a dwarf hired by Argus to militarize local vehicles. As he needs test pilots for his new creations, he offers them to sacrifice themselves in exchange for armed vehicles. They continue on and so return to the control room where Waller informs them that due to their progress, he will now give them the freedom to move around in the city and find Green Lantern. So we see that they manage to reach the X-Corp where they are greeted by Dr. Happer Sen. Believing they are superheroes, the villains order him to remove the bombs from their heads. Out of options, Happer Sen prepares the extraction machine, but just there Amanda arrives, who shoots him to demand access to Luther's files. However, the bald man communicates with her, and after making it clear that his secrets belong to her, she triggers the deletion of his data, and we see Happersen get his head detonated. As Hack works to save the information, Waller reveals to them that she was counting on them searching for X-Corp, and as a warning, in the face of further attempts at subversion, she destroys the extractor machine. Harley proposes to talk to Yedra, and at this, Boomerang remembers that she was killed by the Scarecrow, but we see that she left her trail of life inside the laboratory. Waller orders them to find them, so the squad advances after the trail of plants until they are intercepted by a carnivorous plant in charge of a new infant Yedra, who does not remember Harley. Doesn't hurt her because her pheromones do remember her. Yedra explains to them that she was forced to work for Luthor, as the aliens are sensitive to plant toxins. Now that she is free, she has decided to kill the invaders and the humans in the city. Given this, when Waller orders them to forcibly recruit Yedra, we see that Squad X rejects these orders. Right there, Yedra captures them, ready to devour them, but Boomerang reveals that he injected her with the bomb when he didn't realize it. This, along with Harley's plea, causes Yedra to release them and start crying. Moments later, Flag arrives, who convinces her to join his squad by offering her a quiet place to live. Back at the base, after watching Yedra play roughly with the Penguin, the villains meet with 
with Hack, who hands them a tracker synchronized to the bald man's heartbeat to find him within a five-mile radius. In the midst of their search, upon reaching the top of a building, they find a device that catches Boomerang's attention. When he touches it, he is paralyzed and King Shark follows him, causing him and Deadshot to become unintentionally immobile. Despite warnings not to touch them, the Madwoman makes contact out of curiosity. Thus, with Squad X defenseless, Luthor finally appears. After sending a warning message to Amanda not to intervene in his plans, Luthor says he is ready to destroy the Justice League. Before he finishes speaking, however, he is ripped from his suit by Flash, who has already been converted to Brainiac's side. Deadshot shoots him, but Flash appears behind him, asking if he managed to hit him, taunting him. They then make it clear to them that if they want Luthor, they must follow him to Brainiac. The skull ship extends one of its arms to create an explosion from which a giant mobile weapon emerges with Luther imprisoned in a container on top of it. After taking a few steps and suffering damage from the damage received, the weapon stops. In this way, they manage to reach Luther, who says he knows how to end the invasion but does not want to tell them. Right there in front of them appears Flash, who after warning him that torture awaits him, throws himself upon him. However, Luther activates a grenade which he ejects and crashes flash into a car, starting a shooting spree on the evil hero, until the whole thing goes up in flames. However, Flash appears at his side, extracting Luther's heart and destroying the grenade for good measure. Boomerang taunts Flash for becoming Brainiac's slave, which hurts Flash's pride. He proceeds to create a tornado around them that sucks the air out, but before they die, they are saved by Wonder Woman, who manages to capture them. Through her lasso of truth, she demands to know how to stop Brainiac. At first, Flash claims that Brainiac is invincible, but for a moment he regains consciousness and begs Wonder Woman to kill the League, for only then will the Earth survive. That said, Flash manages to escape, and when Harley and King Shark propose him to join their squad, Wonder Woman locks them all in the container, where Deadshot exposes his claustrophobia. Shortly thereafter, they are released by Lois Lane by remote control and discover that they ended up in the Daily Planet. Planet. The thing about warning them that if Superman is controlled, they'll need to. All the heroes and villains available to confront him, we see that they return to Argus on Waller's orders. Waller asks them why, after so many failures, he did not choose to kill them as punishment. But before a decision is made, alarms warn of the presence of an intruder, who turns out to be a boy named Hiro Okamura, aka the Toy Maker. After repelling Boomerang, Hiro explains to them that he is a mechanical engineer who managed to rescue anti-speed force technology because he is a fan of the Flash. Toymaker manages to convince Waller to participate in his mission as he promises that he can be useful to him. Then Boomerang welcomes him by injecting him with the microbomb, but no one dares to tell him, and instead, Waller orders him to create more repellents like the one he carries. So, after giving Harley a toy, the toy maker leaves for work. However, once on the street, the squad discovers that the toy is a shrunken machine with which they make their way to the amusement park. From there, first Boomerang and then the rest begin to broadcast live to all the screens in Metropolis, using the phone that was stolen from Waller. So, they demand Flash to show up for a rematch. Seeing that he does not arrive, Boomerang proceeds to challenge him, mentioning that the Justice League is dangerous and respected by all its members, except him, since he is only the mascot and the buffoon of the whole team, and that the nickname of the fastest comes from his unsatisfied girlfriends. In the face of such provocation, we see that just as the sentence ends, Boomerang is repeatedly punched by Flash. However, before he kills them, Boomerang pulls out the speed anti-force decoupler that the toy maker gave them and thus manages to hurt Flash. This angers the speedster, so he responds by creating a tornado and launching energy attacks. But this time, thanks to the decoupler, the squad manages to kill Flash. All but Boomerang pay their respects for saving him, but the captain sends him off by showering Flash with a golden shower of his fluids. This defeat causes the skull ship to reclaim Flash's body, and then Green Lantern appears before them, eager to avenge his friend. In fact, he wants to fight. But the rest of the squadron knows that Lintonite would assassinate them without a problem, so they jump into the skull ship's beam, thus entering a world completely out of reality, in a timeless space, and then are ejected to what seems to be a parallel world. Waller doesn't respond so they probe on their own, discovering that they are in a post-apocalyptic metropolis. 
For some reason, Luther's tracker activates, and with no other options, they decide to follow his trail to a subway base where they are reunited with a thin, bearded Luthor. After blaming him for ruining their escape plans, Luther explains to them that they arrived on Earth the two invaded and terraformed, and that he was in contact with the Luther of their universe, warning them about Brainiac. That said, the Squadron and Luther used the slave's mobile lab to travel to his home universe. Here, before Waller is fully informed of what happened, Luther warns them that, in their world, the Squadron died following his orders and thus manages to convince them not to mention their existence and to unmask. Waller carrying a device into the secret sanctuary. Once in front of Amanda, when they tell her that Earth 2 was destroyed, she makes it clear that they will not repeat their mistakes. Rick continues and shows that Brainiac's skull ship is protected by Green Lantern's shield, so they must kill him. In the midst of this, Boomerang stealthily activates Luthor's device, which appears to be a data extractor that King Shark manages to secretly retrieve, as alarms about a coming energy wave distract everyone. Soon, Waller sends them to the battlefield and the squad takes the opportunity to meet Luthor in his hideout, which turns out to be Wayne Bank, as inside the vault they find the entrance to one of Batman's labs. Inside, they discover Wonder Woman, who has just reinforced her shield with kryptonite. King Shark complains to her for not having made a sword to kill Superman, who continues to cause deaths, but Wonder Woman does not accept morality lectures from a shark, so she ignores him and returns to the surface. Luther's hologram appears next, as he remains. Remains in his private hideout for security. Then, thanks to the security system being deactivated, he manages to rush out of Batman's system. Luther promises to find the weapon Batman has hidden against the Green Lantern, and also offers to be their ally. And as a show of trust, we see that thanks to his device, he can now see everything that happens in the Hall of Justice. Thus he discovers that his plan is to have the Justice League killed, so that Argus can then take control of the Metahumans, and if to do so the Squadron must die, they would not be interested in that sacrifice. With this, the Squadron accepts Luther's offer, and Luther gives them new Yellow Lantern devices, so that they end up with Green Lantern. So they soon voluntarily reach Green Lantern on his throne, who upon seeing their tiny lanterns mocks them, making it clear to them that his will is unbreakable. That said, Green Lantern launches missiles at them, but seeing that they miss them, he decides to create a gigantic Susano with his ring as armor, but his creations are shot down by the Yellow Lanterns. Yellow until the Lantern himself is cornered, and to completely release Brainiac's barrier, Deadshot puts a bullet through his skull. However, the mother barrier is still active, and while the rest discuss why, King Shark rips off the Green Lantern's finger and seizes his ring, transforming himself into the new Green Lantern. Now, with this power, while reciting the Oath of Will, we see him create a Megalodon which he crashes into Brainiac's barrier and thus manufactures an opening. But such power causes him to lose his sanity, and he is about to attack his companions. Thus, before being devoured, they take the ring from him, which ends up falling into the river. When Waller learns of the situation, he thanks them for their services and says goodbye. Because at the same time, we see that they launch a nuclear missile towards the skull ship, which means that the squadron would die with explosion. But before hitting, the missile is stopped by Superman, which gives Brainiac enough time to re-establish his barrier. At that moment, Wonder Woman arrives and seeing her there, Superman leaves with the missile to detonate it far enough away. Despite what has happened, Wonder Woman says she can still save her friends, but is immediately attacked by Superman. Superman. As they fight, Waller re-establishes communications to order them to help her, as she is trapped, and reveals to them that the bombs in their skulls are linked to her vital signs. So if she dies, so does the squad. Out of options, the squad scours the city until they finally find her with some damage, such as a dislocated ankle. Gizmo sends them a tank for transport, but it is destroyed by Superman's battle with Wonder Woman. Thus we see that, despite his kryptonite shield, Superman outmatches Wonder Woman in strength and corral her to fry her eyes until she breaks free, causing Superman to touch the kryptonite. But having enough space, Superman recovers and sends her flying. Next, Boomerang returns with an ice cream truck and thus makes it to the doors of the Hall of Justice. However, before entering, the battle between fellow Justice League members moves to go.
and since Walla can barely walk, this slows his pace. In the midst of this, we see King Shark show companionship by keeping Boomerang from being put off by the debris. Moments later, seeing Wonder Woman fighting someone so powerful without help and being cornered to the point where Superman destroys the kryptonite on her shield and then she is knocked down ready to die, the squad decides to ignore Waller's orders and warnings to confront Superman, who looks at them tenderly because he knows they are not a threat. However, they distract him long enough for Wonder Woman to stab him with a shard of kryptonite. With his last strength, Superman responds by attacking him with his thermal vision and although Wonder Woman tries to block it, that power ends up piercing his body. Then, before falling, Superman returns to the skull ship. From the ground, Wonder Woman warns them that given what has happened, Superman will recover soon, so they must prepare themselves and says goodbye, asking them to prove to her that they have a purpose in this war. In fact, they retrieve the Gryptonite pot and return with Waller to the Hall of Justice. All seems lost, but then Luthor uses Boomerang to discreetly announce that the corruption in Superman causes changes in his DNA, and that most likely the rest of the Justice League has also undergone changes. And if they manage to capture Batman alive, they can experiment with him to create a weapon against Superman. With more ideas, Waller agrees to the plan, so Yedra offers to discover the bat's hideout. And since they need a key to get in, Gizmo reveals that he knows how to build a batmobile. The plan begins, and we see Yedra mobilize the roots of her carnivorous plant around the city, until she finds several caves that match what they are looking for. At that moment, Gizmo arrives with the homemade Batmobile which seems to be unsafe. However, even though it ends up exploding, it allows them to enter the Batcave of Wayne Manor. Soon they reach him, and as he is the one they are most afraid of, they unleash a rain of... to rub in. In it, realizing that his mind and the Justice League could be corrupted, he decides to take his leave, leaving a plan of action to stop the entire League. Thus he proceeds to explain the creation of the Yellow Lanterns, the grenade against Flash. But upon reaching himself, Batman makes it clear that there is no anti-Batman device. He goes on to tell Robin that he is proud that he is his son. Such words bring King Shark to tears, as he also had a complicated relationship with his father. But soon the squad reveals that everyone there has family problems. That said, Batman begins to explain how to defeat Superman, but before he finishes, the Batcave begins to undergo changes with the flood of Scarecrow gas, as Batman has just arrived. Thus, we see that Batman is now presented with Harley's mind as a dark fire demon. However, since Harley not only spent a lot of time at the Scarecrow's side, but also managed to get the neurochemistry degree, she manages to infect Batman with her own toxin, which allows the squad to attack him until they knock him off him leaving him almost dead. Boomerang plans to follow up on the betrayal and cut off a finger, but is forbidden to do so by the rest. Harley then carries his body as revenge for all his defeats, but being too heavy, he decides to shrink it with alien technology. Once it reaches Luthor's hands, he proceeds with the extraction of a sample of his brain for analysis, although Batman is still awake. Soon Luthor gives them the weapon he managed to manufacture against Superman, as it is a golden kryptonite that magnifies the damage of green kryptonite. That said, they begin with the execution of the plan, and to get Superman's attention, they take Batman to the battlefield, but they make a fool of themselves because they must return for the golden kryptonite they were forgetting. So, after donning the kryptonite as armor, they arrive at Superman's statue. Here, when Batman laughs at them for believing they will defeat Superman and proceeds to point out the squad member's shortcomings, Harley interrupts him to make it clear that they already know his repertoire of sermons and disqualifications for their dashed dreams. That said, Harley and blows his brains out, finishing off the bat. Immediately, Superman appears in front of them, incredulous to see Batman fall to a band of mediocre villains. But when Boomerang throws his weapon at him and sees that it now hurts him, he responds by showing that he is capable of destroying that kryptonite with his thermal vision. The great battle continues, and we see that the squadron employs all its arsenal of golden kryptonite against the Man of Steel, until after a great assault they manage to knock him down sending him to the other world. Now they demand the skull ship to show its next card, and as Brainiac apparently does not answer it, the team celebrities, but then they are immobilized in the air by Brainiac himself. He decides to have them go through his portal to show them how, in the future, he has already conquered Earth and his plan is that his world has been recreated in all universes. Brainiac accepts that their chaos in acting is what allowed them to defeat the Justice League and that's why he finds them fascinating. Since he cannot erase them from the equation, he has decided to enslave them as new soldiers. 
So we see the parasitic aliens land on them to begin their corruption, promising Deadshot that he will become the greatest assassin, Harley Quinn that she can unleash all her destruction on the worlds she desires, King Shark that he will gain access to all the knowledge he craves, and Boomerang, he promises to give her what she has always wanted, but before mentioning it, they are teleported by Luthor to his laboratory. Here, Luthor reveals to her that thanks to Brainiac's presence, he discovered that Brainiac is connected to 12 versions of himself in other universes. Suddenly Waller appears on the screen showing that she has already discovered that they were working as double agents, so she orders Luthor to be captured. However, he stops her by revealing that he already has a microbomb in his body, and if anything happens to him, the building will explode it. Waller then orders them to return to the Hall of Justice, and once there, the squadron observes that Brainiac began the extraction of Earth's magma to accelerate the terraforming. However, this does not intimidate them, and after Harley compares the machines to space dildos, they return with Waller who warns them that in trying to integrate Luthor and Argus's networks, she discovered that she was infiltrated by the bald man with his help. That said, on the scene appears the hologram of Luthor who shows up consoling Walla by telling her that it was easier to infiltrate Argus than Wayne Systems. He continues with the squad and explains to them that the 13 Brainiacs are being sought by Hack and that they need a material called Prometheus to cross between worlds and kill the Brainiacs. Already with this material, we see that they make the first dimensional jump to the first world where they find Brainiac on his throne. He realizes that mind control won't work on them, so he evolves into Brilldogs, a sort of hybrid with Flash's body. But just as the squadron already defeated the good Flash, they also defeat Brill Dogs and encapsulate him so they can take him prisoner, thus returning him to their world. However, here as they take their time arguing over who will punish the invader, when it comes time to free him, he collapses from suffocating. Boomerang plans to cut him, a finger for his collection, and as an entry card to infiltrate the ship. But at that moment, Brainiac awakens, and although upon seeing Luthor he lunges at him, we see Waller inject him with a device that begins to drain part of the skull ship's network using the connection of the parallel brainiac and when the discharge ends the ship collapses and explodes and brainiac dies disintegrated for not belonging to that universe seeing this the team realizes that they must now go after the other 12 brainiacs so ending this story did you like it didn't you like it well make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything